Hello everyone. Uh, my, na my name is Onrad Onrad and I'm with my friend with Akash Dar. And I am a Federal Website Teams member and also Mindshare Electric representative. Uh, please, Akash, uh, introduce yourself. Sure thing. So I'm Website Synapse Objective Revamp Lead, at least for now. And I'm also working in the Red Hat CPE since some time. Okay, thank you. So today we're going to talk about the Fedora graphics and what are we doing it in secretly with my friend, uh, with Akash, and we just did something uh, nice and hopefully everyone is going to be like it. So first things first, uh, what do we plan? Our plan is basically is we want to uh, in importing apps from Impra to recre uh, recreate Fedora app directory with a modern futures. So with that, uh, we're going to have more visually appealing uh, aspect of the website. So today's our Fedora apps is, looks like this right now, and we want to make this much more beautiful and much more nicer. And in the in the first beginning, and um, it was made by I believe Ralph, and for a long time ago. And he made an awesome job and he just created this for the apps charts and it's pretty much uh, you can if you want to access anything uh, from Fedora world, you can just click click these links, which is Justin just shared it. And it is an amazing uh, website to see what do we have in our infrastructure and our website as well. But as times passed, it is just a little bit become older and it needs a little bit of a revamp as well. <clears throat> So our plan is basically we want to avoid the query as much as possible and stick to native JavaScript DOM. And also we want to obsolete this old JavaScript info with toolkit, which is the, the right now is the graphics has been generated by using that library. And it has been not maintaining over the last six years, and which is a problem. And we want to, of course, implementing some setting templates, but it seems to fitting that if we can just you know extend this ability and make it much more nicer, of course. And if you want to pay a visit, uh, you can just share the scan the link or you can just click it over there in the chat as we shared. And thanks to Justin for that. And let's let's move along and see what is going to happen in the next uh, future in our graph stuff. So I'm going to pass the words to Akash so he can explain our ideas as well. Please. Thanks, Murat. So uh, our idea is to build upon the existing uh, Fedora apps directory and to use the ideas that have been there for a while and build upon them to create something which looks way better, is interactive and has great animations with itself. And uh, we want to add more modern front-end content. So for folks who are accessing it for mobile phones or tablet devices or wherever else, they would be able to access it just fine. Also to add advanced interactions using elements which have been generated either from JSON documents or from SVG images. More about that in coming slides and some custom pop-ups, click events and whatnot to make sure that it all feels like an application and not just like a simple website. And it's not just about apps directory. We want to create more charts like this for all the projects that we have inside our uh, Fedora universe. Moving on to the next slide. Let's talk about the progress that we have been making so far. Over to you, Anurad. Go ahead. So our progress. Yes, Akash, we want to talk about our progress. What are we doing? It? So uh, first things first, we have today, thank you to Marie for creating this amazing organization chart. And we want to use this chart to give some life because this is an amazing chart. This is, uh, is basically the entire federal organization. And this is how we work in this federal, basically, if you just take a look at the chart. And this is an amazing one. And this has been created very recently uh, in, the, in the last March 2021. So we can say it's pretty updated. So we're going to, of course, going to give some life on that, hopefully, maybe. And it's going to be an amazing as well. So what technology we used? Just for creating these new charts, uh, we're just using some bootstrap. And we find a new uh, chart called Apache eChart. And we just want to check, take a look into it and see what we can do 
and what is the ability can happen and of course with we want we don't want to use jquery but since we're just getting into it and we just want to you know warm up the idea and we're trying to implement it also we are also testing as well because we are also exploring this new idea it is also new for us to creating charts and also of course we just we did it with the love of course with my friend this was an amazing work with akash i have to say thank you to him right now in front of everyone because he helped me a lot and as well and he also we did a lot of teamwork it was an amazing work to see that come to alive today and also represent and presented to everyone in here in the chat and in federal community and also in everyone else so <clears throat> Let's go to the next one and picking the coordinates. But this one is going to my friend. So Akash, please, can you explain to us what are you going to do with these coordinates? Sure thing. So with creating charts using the Apache eCharts, uh, there is a specific graph library that we make use of. But in order to make sure that we do it by ourselves and we have the tailor fitting minor precision to details to where exactly our elements would lie and how would they be connected with each other. We had to go into the details about where the colors, uh, what the colors would be, what the angles would be and where the coordinates are going to lie. So these graphs can load up from JSON documents with a custom schema where you tell what that element is about, where is it going to be with the reference uh, positions and, uh, and other attributes as well. Then you, it kind of sticks to the technicality of JavaScript. I cannot expect a design person to understand which kind of acts like a barrier for a person who wants to design stuff, but they don't want to get into the technical details of it. But it also opens up the possibilities of finer adjustments and you can pinpoint your location on a graph. So be it zooming or zoom out, it's kind of going to stay the same. And collaboration can be challenging, and uh, the technical nature is still a thing. Now, Unral, in the next slide, we'll explain how we we'll go ahead and solve this. Over to you. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. And one quick question just come up to to us: Is it bound to HTML IDs? That's the beautiful part. It doesn't. We're just using our JSON coordinates, and also our next thing I'm going to explain to you is going to be much more amazing. And we just want to lower the barrier from this technicality between design team as well. And let's see how it's going to be. We just want to make some interactive APGs. How do we want to do that? Well, a design member can make the chart, anything it could be, of course. And we want to give some life of that. And as you can see in the picture, we try to do some little bit of a sneak peek, and we want to show the bigger picture later on. And we just want to need, need label on the on the SVGs, on the groups we want to make it alive. And we want to also make load as it is, so people can open that and they can also interact with it. So thanks to Marie, as we speak before, she made this amazing chart for us already. And me, as a technical guy as well, I can give this chart as a give some life. Yes, I'm, a, I'm this is going to be a little bit, uh, people may remember that giving a life uh, <clears throat> stuff, but it's going to be another joke. We're going to not talk about it. And also going to give much more greater flexibility and opportunity because that will be an amazing. And of course, what we want, we want the collaboration easier for everyone because they, a design member or non-technical person, then can just draw an SVG for us and we can just try to make it compatible for our charts automatically. So we don't have to even do so much work. It's lowering our job flow you know, our workflow, because we don't need to do so much stuff. We just load the SVG as it is, and it's going to be interacted already. What we do is only, we just need to do some little bit of a configuration, and it's going to be easier for a developer and easier for a design member as well. Or if they want to do something much more custom and a little bit of a different, we, of course, have another route from JSON way to creating a chart entirely from JSON to pointing A to B location and trying to do this ankles and all the coordinates, whatever is necessary. And I remember that Akash, I think he's going to say that, I think he worked a lot of mathematical calculation on this one. <laughs> of course, it's going to be amazing as well. So let's move along the next time. So in our going to demo, 
we're going to show you what the, what the heck did we did and what is our result? What is our final situation we're going to have it? I think first is going to my friend Akash. He's going to show his charts and I'm sure going, next I'm going to show my charts. All righty. So I'll ask you to sh uh, stop sharing your screen so that yeah, I can share course. mine of first. Course, of course. And there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know once the screen is visible. It is visible to me immediately. Sure thing. So this is some kind of an alpha or pre-alpha or something which comes way before pre-alpha, if you ask me, version of how we want to implement things. But it is representative of how things would be like down the line. Of course, if you don't like how it looks like, feel free to join us and we'd be very happy to include the changes that you suggest. So talking about coordinates oh my god i have to literally place it in the origin then move 50 uh, units uh, top of it and then you know contact the angles in a way that they seem fit well of course you can zoom in and the way they work is in a uniform scaling manner and there's a lot of interaction with it as well we are not design folks and something in a design point of view would definitely help us to a greater extent. And that is something that Onural could explain. But to this point, what we can do is we can relate an element with another one. It doesn't have to be a circle and it doesn't have to have a single color. Side I note, might even, sure, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Side note is, uh, as you can see, everything could be a circular but we find a trick to change that circular objects into the different object as well with the using still the JSON method. And we are definitely happy to explore these more ideas as well. Please, Akash. Sure thing. So as we see this chart for team, we can definitely go ahead and replace these with, I don't know, stars with images of people that these are talking about and with description that they have. The possibilities for going creative with this is almost endless. And just because that we are loading these up from a JSON dictionary, we can potentially add the changes in real time and uh, you know have them loaded up real quick. Yeah, just F5 and done. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty that's much that. about how uh, we would like to design using JSON. It's kind of a difficult way but now uh, Onuralp would explain how he would, you know, make an SVG come alive as if it were a Frankenstein. Sorry about that. <laughs> Go ahead, Onuralp. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't want to use that word, but I think it's going to be a uh, stick over there. All right, all right, no problem, no problem. Let me share my screen. Uh, okay, let me share my screen quickly and see, let me show you my surprise as well. And of course, we have to do a little bit of a thing first. Uh, okay, so let me share my screen. And um, it's gonna come alive, it's come alive. So let me switch. And as you can see, we are in the organizational chart in the, in the same manner. So as you can see, it looks like a, a normal SVG, right? Like nothing is happening, it's just there beautifully and then we want to make some interaction can we do it of course we can do it so let's just move my mouse a little bit and if i move my mouse as you can see i can also do the same interaction as we did on the on the other json ones we did before so we can see that we just give some life to all these graphics and svgs gs to alive so after a little, a lot of research and technical difficulties we had it before, we figure out how to make give, give these SVGs alive and we can make them interaction and clickable and also pop up the, whatever is necessary. We can change the color, we can do whatever we want, we can zoom in because everything is possible. And thanks to our library we find out and the knowledge we have not right now, we can just give more opportunities. As you can see, when I click on it, it also show the names and the titles and labels, it's just for, like, um, of course, exemplary purposes to show everyone. They can, of course, improve this idea and make it better. And some of them doesn't have the clickability because I didn't implement it deliberately to say that uh, because we want to just show you how easy it is as well. I would like to do it as well. Uh, so 
first things first, I would like to explain. Uh, when, once we load the SVG, uh, we can just do uh, basically something very easy. So let's just, let's just focus on the addition. So as you can see, addition doesn't have any option. We, it's, it, it cannot be clickable right now. We want to give some life on this. So I don't want to uh, rebuild my JavaScript. I don't want to change anything on, on the on the HTML stuff, and we just want to change uh, this one, make a live. How do we do that? It's actually fairly easy. All I have to do is I just give some attribute, uh, which is on the SVG, and let me also share my screen again on the different one, so that I can show that how is it done as well. Let me go to my SVG chat. All right. So I think everyone can see that I am on the Inkscape. It's just a good old Inkscape. Everybody's yes, probably visible. know about it. Sorry? It's visible. The screen is visible. Yeah, thank you so much. So let us zoom in a little bit and let us see. So when I click further console, I can see you can everybody can see that we have a name. And this name is our magic. So when we give a name into the box, we want to give some life. We can just click on this. Let's just say I want to click this object. Of course, it could be needs to be ungrouped because sometimes SVGs. Uh, well, okay, now I click it. So let me add a new value as well. And I'm going to say additions. Or let's just say that for a, for a fun's sake, additions for next. And let's just have some fun. It doesn't matter. We can give any any value, but just for the demo purposes, let's just give a nicer name. So my job is done. Now I am just stop sharing my screen for a little bit. I save the SVG. Let me copy it to proper proper folder quickly. Because I'm just copying the SVGs into the next to the HTML page I made it. So let me do that. <clears throat> Make sure it's also saved as well. Okay, saved. And copying. All right. So let's open up my page again. The beauty of this approach is the fact that the design team can be as wild and as creative as they can. There is nothing holding them back in the engineering point of view. All they need to do is identify the elements in the SVG distinctively and we can automatically pick that up and uh, you know we can create elements which are interactive on the web page hmm something it doesn't add up can i just break it for a little bit right now come on i don't know right. anyway Nural, i have dropped a link to the github repository that folks can take a look into we can move on with the presentation you know yeah 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 sure 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 sure, sure. yeah oh just uh, one tiny moment before I head. I just want to make sure I didn't make a mistake. And if it doesn't work, yeah, we can move on. Well, coming, coming to the questions matter. in the meanwhile, uh, Will it work in links? If links is the text only browser, if I'm getting it correctly, unfortunately it won't because we need a browser which ha which runs JavaScript and uh, yeah. well, links, I don't think it runs JavaScript, so it won't. And um, oh. yeah, talking about how you can get involved in this thing. Next slide, please. I'm sure. Yeah. So the way you can contribute would obviously be to first have an historical context about what we have been doing and how the foundation has been built up. The documentation, checking out the documentation page would definitely be one of the first steps. We have weekly meetings on every Tuesday, so feel free to join us there. We'll be adding the links to them in the next slide. And then uh, you can introduce yourselves to our Telegram and IRC channel. We're always active over there, so feel free to join us. And if, if it's the first time of you folks contributing in Fedora, then I would definitely suggest you to uh, 
follow the join workflow as that can help you to expand your perspectives to a greater amount of teams or sub projects that you can definitely be a part of talking about the repository well that's right there impression as we like to call it if the name doesn't sound good we we'll definitely go ahead and change this down the line who knows and uh, this is how you can contact us we are on matrix as well as on libera chat and both of these chat rooms are being bound together so join any one of them and you should be just fine and then we have a documentation for our community revamp in the link and uh, that's the mailing list that uh, you definitely want to keep posted Yeah, thank you. Feel free to ask your questions. We still have a solid uh, seven to eight more minutes. Eight minutes before, yeah. Yep, before we can definitely uh, go on to some other exciting talks. And the polls are still active, so uh, feel free to answer them as we go on. Uh, I was able. I would like to show, show the last result. I would like to show it right now, since okay. we have already finished it. As I said, I changed the addition. I added to, uh, some words and vocabulary. I changed a little bit. Maybe something was doesn't like me, but let me just share my screen again to show the results. We didn't forget you. We didn't forget everyone. So as I said, I just added addition wasn't working before. Now we can see it works. <laughs> it's also now now alive. Also Fesco too, and we can just do more and more as well. So the only thing that was required was not to be touched in a javascript or html or css side of things but to no. edit the svg add a specific name to an element so that it is distinctively recognized and lo and behold it becomes interactive and this can not be done with just the graphs it can be an image with certain elements inside of it that's the beauty of this library and the more we go on into the documentation the more we'd know about it but frankly documentation is something that uh, we like to avoid more of a video stuff more of a watching anime and crying our eyes out kind of a stuff but surely <laughs> feel free to join us <laughs> well for documentation aspect sometimes it could be sometimes sometimes it could be a challenging i mean it was a little bit for us as well but we we, we will able to manage to handle that but as i said loading an SVGs and trying to do something more about it. It's definitely interesting to us and I hope it will be interesting to everyone in here and wants to hop in and try to try it out. All right, so there's another question. Is there any layout algorithm in JS? Layout algorithm is something that eCharts is using in order to make sure that they position their graphs, the link between the elements. So that is something that is you know abstracted by the library that we're using so all we need to know is the fact that we are using that specific library and uh, depending upon the, the approach in which we want to make this happen either it's a json i mean if you are very specific about where the thing should be or uh, the svg if you want to you know go all out into imaginative designs of svg that approaches can be a bit different See you around, Justin. Thanks for being here. And for connecting the dots, uh, just for adding to that is uh, we all need, we just need to know the node IDs of the JSON in the JSON file, or you can add it in your JavaScript file as well. It, the, basically, we need to know the ID of the node. It could be a number, it could be a name, sorry, string. It could be anything. So if you just say, uh, I would like to connect A to B, Oh, uh, what I have to do is basically in the, in the proper node section, let's just say connection section, let's just say, I don't remember the exact name for now. Uh, we're just going to say this A is needs to be connected to B. So the, the chart is going to be A to B. So the color of the between on the lines could be, could be going to be basically the first one is getting into it. But we also think about it as well. We can change that color into the sub something in ex and entirely custom shape and thickness and curviness, we do try to discover a lot of stuff on, into it, and it's definitely possible, and it's definitely tested. All right, so before we wrap this up, let me go through the poll results. There are a lot of folks who have voted that they are already a part of the websites and object revamp. Feels really mm -hmm. good about it. And the folks who are not, they're very, very willing to join. 
and, and the folks who, who are not planning to join maybe they will in some years or some months who knows they feel like that yeah this is some awesome stuff that they would need to be a part of so why not let's keep that door open and uh, there are folks who are really really interested to contribute to Fedora graphs it's partly our fault we did not have a negative response and uh, <laughs> that is how we get to know that <laughs> well one thing is for sure uh we're definitely going to get a lot of issues and pull requests hopefully and a lot of okay. ideas probably right. is needs to be in the place and there's a lot of work to do i mean we understand that but we just would like to show you the new opportunities new possibilities because we're revamping a lot of websites and we would like to give some love to our main center section of the federal apps it's totally important it was there for a long time and it needs to be revamped now we have organizational chart we would like to give some life onto it which is was the idea uh, but the first idea definitely come up thanks to Ralph being in the in the past. He created an amazing apps uh, website, and we, and with this idea we did a lot of stuff as well. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thank you so much for being here.